Security, security agencies, including the BNI, the Port Security, Marine Police and Military, intercept container containing firearms at the Tema port. Also, the National Democratic Congress chairman makes a U-turn. He's set to meet the CID boss shortly. And elsewhere on international front, the governing African National Congress, the ANC, expects her to be retained in power, but with a reduced majority in parliament. We've got, got details of all these, all these stories and many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. Be reminded that we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with a few comments and suggestions on our social media pages. It's TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, security agencies, including the BNI, the Port Security, Marine Police and the military officers have intercepted a container said to contain firearms at the Tema port. A whistleblower had raised alarm on the container, alleging it contained sophisticated guns, including AK-47 assault rifles at the Tema port. The container was scheduled to offload the goods today, but upon scanning at the port, it was suspected to contain weapons and have since been moved to the, st the state warehouse under heavy security for examination. Now, documents of the container indicate it contains hunting guns belonging to uh, Yatko, a private arms dealing firm. Right, so for more updates on this developing story, my colleague Josephine Finpon is stationed at the Tema port and joins us live on the phone lines. Josephine, uh, what more can you report on the story? Right, Parkwiti, um, currently we have moved the container, the 40 footer container from the port. We have, uh, we have moved it to the old state warehouse, which belongs to customs, where they normally keep the sea consignment and goods and uh, the team made up of security personnel. Custom is leaving BNI here, national security here. We have port security, marine police, and they are going to open the, the container and see the actual things which have been shipped into the country. And then in a short while, they will tell us exactly what is it. Is it an AK-47 pump action gun or uh, probably shotgun? But on the document that the the clearing agent declared was that he stated that they were hunting the scanning through. They, de they detected some discrepancies which they thought that could be the AK-47 that was actually alleged earlier. So the, the team will do that shortly and let us know what exactly, what the contents and, and then how dangerous it is. And if the clearing agent or the importer, that is, Yako Ghana Limited, a private firm that deals with guns in the country, have the license to bring this into the country, Park all right, do stand by for us, uh, Jasmine Frimpon is our reporter on the ground live from the Tema port, and uh, we'll bring you updates on the story in our subsequent bulletins. The National Communications Authority, the NCA, has closed down uh, pro-NDC radio stations. That's Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. The two stations went off air this afternoon after the staff of the NCA and some police officers stormed their premises. The officials of the NCA and the police, according to some staff of Radio Gold, stormed the station at about 2 p.m. Thursday afternoon, demanding its closure. According to a statement from NCA, radio stations operating without valid authorizations as determined by the 2017 FM Broadcasting Audit have been shut down with immediate effect as enforcement action in view of the decision of the Electronic Communications Tribunal. Programs manager of Radio Gold, Richard Japon, however, denied the station had not renewed its license. We've taken all the necessary steps to regularize our authorization with NCA so, and also comply with every directive that comes from GIBA because GIBA is more or less like our mother organization. So as far as we are aware, we don't know of any infractions with 
He expressed surprise the NCE authorities would storm the station with armed police officers when they could have presented the letter and gone ahead with the action. If the NCA wants us to shut down, they should just send us a letter and then we'll comply. But we had heavily armed police officers entering our premises. I was outside the office when I was coming, I saw a police car parked at our gates. I entered and I saw two police tundra and another vehicle. I mean, something I've not experienced in this office since I joined Radio Gold. So really, something like that, you'll be a little bit terrified, uh, as if we are operating something dangerous in, in our premises here. Because I don't think if you want us to comply with a directive, we need to be in intimidated with that kind of officials who came here today. Hearing that XYZ was also closed down at the time that the station has started a live broadcast of the reaction of the NDC Council of Elders to the police invitation to the party's national chairman, Samuel Fusuampofo, at a news conference at the party's headquarters, Richard Japon said he suspected the action of the NCA was triggered by the government. I've just been informed that XYZ is also off air, so it should tell you a certain kind of state capture that is going on. Workers were seen loitering expressing frustration over the closure. So it's a watch if here on TV3. We're streaming live on Facebook. We are active on social media. Our handle is TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on Twitter. Let's know what you think or make of our top headline stories this hour. Meanwhile, the National Communications Authority has justified the closure of the two radio stations in Accra. That's Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. Director General of the Authority, Joe Anochi, addressing the media hours after the shutdown, said both stations had prior notice of their default but failed to renew their licenses before time. According to the NCA, only the two stations have defaulted in Accra, adding that the authority will take enforcement nationwide. We began this exercise in 2017. It was highly pub published. Uh, at the time when the audit was done, a decision was made to uh, apply sanctions to uh, FM authorization holders who had their authorization expired. So we relied on our schedule of penalties and so we applied sanctions accordingly. Uh, most of them were fine. At some point in time, uh, several others decide to go to seek redress in the court. The law allowed them to do that. So someone went to the high court, others went to uh, the electronic communication tribunal. The tribunal in this ruling decided that uh, at the time that uh, the fines were made, the authorization had expired. So if the authorization was expired, you could not find them. Essentially what it means is that you return, those who have made any payment return their money to them and then apply the inherent sanctions that we, we, we do have at NC. That is, if, you, if your authorization has expired, you're just like anyone who don't have any authorization. So if you are on air, you are unauthorized. You are, you are illegal. So um, we decided to apply the law as is, and, and that's what we have done. Uh, it's, it's an ongoing exercise. Uh, to, today is the first phase. Tomorrow we will be in other places, but it, it's, we intend to ensure that the law is, is, is enforced. Right, so that's Joe Anochi. He is with the National Communications Authority, and they carried out this exercise yesterday. Uh, now, ever since that exercise, there's been a lot of reaction to this uh, on Facebook, on social media. Lots of people condemning it. Uh, some say it's state capture. Some have said, sort of suggest that it's just uh, the application of the law. Uh, we've just been joined the studio by Sedem before he's he head of news planning and gathering here at uh, Media General. Sedem, thank you very much for your time. And I'm sure you've monitored the uh, discussions uh, all throughout yesterday when, since this action was taken. Is it state capture? Well, I won't put it that way. I would say that the constitution of our country, the 1992 constitution, is fiercely protective of the rights of the media. 
Mm. Uh, it's clear the number of provisions in the next constitution that seeks to preserve this right. So it does so jealously. But with respect to this matter... Uh, what does the law say? Well, the ninety-two constitution, if you check Article 162, uh, Clause 3, it is quite clear that there should be no impediment on the rights of any person to institute a media. I mean, if you would indulge me, I'd want to read the specific words uh, that the Constitution uses so that it's not sort of like my opinion that is being uh, imposed on the public, but basically this is what the position of the law is. So Article uh, 162 of our 1992 Constitution, <coughs> under freedom and responsibilities of the media, says that there shall be no impediment to the establishment of private press or media. And in particular, there shall be no law requiring any person to obtain a license as a prerequisite, one, to the establishment of media, or two, to the operation of a newspaper, journal, or other media of mass communication or information. Mm. These are the clear words of the Constitution. Mm. I believe that the, the powers that the NCA draws, mm. though broadly also from the Constitution, is of particular interest to um, Article 164, which is the I limitation. I was just going to say that what the NCA board said was that they were just applying the law. So they yes. are also standing on something quite well, valid. They are standing on the provisions, the powers that have been given them under Article 164, mm. which is the limitations and rights on those freedoms. Mm. Now, this is the language that it uses here. The provision of Article 162 and 163, which are the provisions that I read to you, mm. requiring that we do not need licenses mm. to either establish or to operate media mm. houses. It continues to say that. The, those articles of this constitution are subject to laws that are reasonably required in the interest of national security, public order, mm. public morality, and the purpose of protecting the rights of other people. Mm. So it will stand to reason that the constitution can't be speaking, can't be double speak. Mm. You can't interpret the constitutional provisions as against what is clear and unambiguous. Mm. Any other provision, any sub laws, any bylaws that are made by any other agency, even whether those are creatures of the constitution themselves, even the courts, mm. when they run contrary to the provisions of the 1992 constitution or any provision of it, they avoid. Mm. So the interpretation of this would necessarily mean that we are regulating that space to allow for people not to operate or function in a manner that is against public morality, mm. presents a threat to national security, mm. or undermines their rights that other individuals are supposed and, to enjoy. And it does not amount to sense. So for stations which have been running all mm. this while, many mm. of them for several years, mm. if there is a reason to pull them off air and take ownership of their property, mm. a fair case would have to be made that the powers that have been given the NCA to ensure that these sort of um, interests, the national interest, mm. the national security interests, etc., are undermined by the continual existence of these frequencies. So if there are radio stations or television stations who do or who have not renewed their licenses, how do you go about it? Because they've kept I, engaging them, the, the radio stations themselves have admitted that they've been engaged in the NCA over a period of time. Yes. The laws do have to be abided by. So what do they do then? Well, the laws do have to be abided by, including this provision of the Constitution. Mm. I think this is a subject that is uh, open to the courts to interpret. Mm. I don't know the nature of the cases that were brought before the, uh, the, the courts, the, the tribunals that were set up by, by uh, uh, the NC and other, by the judiciary to attend to some of these matters. Mm. Because the court will only deal with the issues that you present before them. Mm. If you went there with the cases that are being made by the NCA, et cetera, mm. and you don't, you don't go to the Supreme Court to seek the Supreme Court's interpretation of this provision, you arrive at the kind of judgment that we have here. Mm. I think this is a constitutional interpretation that is incumbent on the Supreme Court to deliver to us. Mm. And my entreatment is that we pursue this matter at the Supreme Court so that we are all clear in our minds. Because the Constitution's approach to the freedoms that the media is supposed to enjoy is so clear, it's blatant. We cannot assume that another agency, a sub-agency, an inferior agency to the Constitution, in this sense, I don't mean it pejoratively, mm. can also go and set up its own laws as a clawback to that which is unambiguously set out by the 1992 Constitution. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Salem Ofori is uh, head of news planning and gathering. He's also... Um, now, three can confirm that the chairman of the National Democratic Congress has considered his earlier stance not to meet the police CID and is set to meet um, in a few minutes. Earlier, the NDC's Council of Elders and the legal team advised Samuel Fosu Ampa for not to meet the CID, but 
We are gathering that he is expected to be at the police CID headquarters shortly. Uh, let's go live now to the CID headquarters where my colleague Kamala Kluche has been keenly following this development from the police headquarters. Kamala, thank you for your time. So what more can you report to us? I've been following up this story and, uh, uh, well, it is emerging from our sources within the CID headquarters uh, that the national chairman of the NDC, together with his lawyers, that meeting between the CID and the national chairman of the NDC, together with his lawyers, happened, though we did report uh, late last night that from our sources within the CID, that meeting or, or that agreement uh, was had between both parties early this morning we are told that that meeting uh, was held the location of the meeting we are unable to tell but we have confirmation from our sources within the CID that that has happened now what is left is for the chairman of the NDC to write his statement a statement is yet to be taken from him and then whatever steps that or, or whatever procedures that will come uh, later would get to know the sort have in there have confirmed to us that yes indeed that meeting uh, was held then subsequently they have also agreed on certain ground rules or ground rules that there will not be much media engagement in this and then also uh, on the part of the ndc their supporters will not throng the cid headquarters um, like they do in their numbers anytime any of the officials uh, are brought here uh, we have also been told that the CID will subsequently uh, release a statement to that effect as to the communication they have had between both of them and how the investigations uh, have gone or are going. Uh, so the confirmation, however, is that yes, that meeting happened here. We did not meet them inside, but our sources have confirmed to us that yes, indeed, that meeting happened. CID headquarters, Accra. All right, thank you very much, Kamala Kluche, our reporter, reporting live from the police headquarters. Uh, let's get on the phone last night and speak to Professor Ransford Jampo. Uh, he's a political scientist. Uh, he's also been monitoring development uh, in the country. Uh, Prof, uh, let me start off with um, the issue of uh, the police, uh, the, the U-turn by the National Democratic Congress chairman. Um, I know you had earlier made some uh, comments about this story. Uh, what's your own reaction now? Well, thank you very much. I think um, I yesterday wrote a piece on my wall on Facebook saying that I was not pleased and happy with the way and manner the Council of Elders of the uh, National Democratic Congress conducted themselves. So I, uh, I didn't like the fact that they were the ones who were saying that um, for some purpose didn't honor that invitation. But in my view, I thought that was too much... Um, way below them. A council of elders were supposed to be advising in camera. They were supposed to be doing things behind the scenes and not to be saying things that had a tendency to incite supporters, you know, and to um, increase um, the tension, political tension that is already peaking. And I said it in that write-up that given their posture as council of elders, uh, they have the clout and they have the stature to be able to engage the powers that be in resolving this impasse. And so I am quite, I feel quite vindicated that at the end of the day, Hussein Pofu himself has seen reason and has seen the fact that this is in his own interest for him to honor uh, the, the, the call and to ensure that, I mean, the impasse is resolved. So um, what he has done has sort of, you know, created the stance that the Council of Elders, you know, took. It is good. Um, for us as a country, we do not need the needless tension that is in the green. Otherwise, it shifts our focus and attention from the core things that I believe government must do to be able to deliver on its promises. We must all be watchers and people who are aware of what must be done so that we, we demand accountability so that these things get done um, to better our lot. We do not have to allow ourselves to be dragged into needless tension that that will sort of you know undermine development. And so I am happy he's gone and I believe they able to talk and I mean this is nothing. Nothing has happened to him at the end of the day. 
And so what was the point about the press conference yesterday? I think it was premature and elders must always be elders. They must act behind the scenes. They must advise behind the scenes. They must give good counsel behind the scenes. They should not be seen to be doing things that he should just do. Uh, Prof, uh, some have also sought to uh, question the timing of this, uh, you know, invitation by the police CID and also sought to read meanings into it. Uh, some have also said it's political persecution. Uh, wouldn't this go to further muddy the political climate that exists already? Hello, please, I didn't hear your question, if you could come again. Yes, I was saying that some have gone to question the timing of the invitation by the police CID and sort of suggest that this would further muddy the political tension that already exists. Some are questioning the timing. Is that what you said? That's right. Well, the point is um, I've had issues with um, um, people doing things without records or without thinking about the mood, you know, the political temperature of the country. Uh, yes, I yesterday questioned, for instance, the timing for uh, the close down of some media houses. And then also I felt that um, the timing for also the invitation was not too much good. But the point is, um, nevertheless, we've been able to reach um, some, um, some form of consensus and there is some form of resolution the son was invited as honored the invitation, contrary to the stand that was taken by his party. And nothing has happened to him. And that's good um, for our quest to ensure that we do not um, increase or heighten the tension, welfare tension that is that is doing. So I think it's, it's, it's good for Ghana. Right. It's good you, you've already touched on the um, closure of the two radio stations, uh, the pro NDC radio stations, Radio XYZ and Radio Gold. Uh, I, I read a piece uh, you wrote yesterday on Facebook suggesting that the actions uh, by the NCA was a bit high-handed. You still maintain that position? Well, I, I, I think that uh, whoever did that um, demonstrated um, a little bit of indiscretion and then the person also lacked a good sense of judgment with respect to timing. You see, all over the world, public policies, um, government actions and inactions, and even court verdicts take into consideration the mood within the party politics. Okay? So we're talking about just last week that we were told that our uh, international ratings with respect to press, press freedom had gone down. We're talking about last week that uh, Manasse had fled from the country and then it had generated a whole lot of issues. We're talking about a press conference that had been organized by the NDC saying um, it's top echelon shouldn't um, or, um, honor any invitation from CID. And so many things that were picking the political attention. And so anybody who felt the right thing to do um, was to also go and contribute to the pension that was going up by closing down radio stations, you know, good. Why didn't they do it somewhere two weeks ago? And why didn't they also say that, well, they are doing what they are doing is wrong, and so we we'll have to apply the, the rules. But let's be fair, it's to somewhere next to where the tension would have cemented down. I am not a lawless person. I believe that radio stations want to do their work well by keeping government on their toes. They must also operate within the confines of rules and laws. And so I don't support the operation of any radio station that um, does not have, you know, um, license. But the point is, the timing for cracking the whip was wrong. And it fed, it, it fits into the tension and creates a situation as if somebody is out there, you know, just interested in uh, doing something on top to certain people. I don't think it's right. If they have done what is wrong, the whip must be cracked. But we must always be mindful of timing. I've always said that a bad thing is a good thing that is done at the wrong time. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ransford uh, Jampo, for joining us as a political scientist with the University of Ghana, uh, sharing his own perspective on a number of running issues in the country today. Now, the Ghana Police Service has launched a manhunt for three persons suspected to have masterminded the assault of a police sergeant uh, at Kukuhre. Uh, near Ashalaja in the Gawes municipality. 27 others have already been arrested. A report by my colleague Peter Kwao Adato.
media reaching on Thursday, May 9, was prompted by the Sunday, May 5, assault on a police sergeant at Krokoshe near Ashalaja in the Ganwes municipality. The junior police officer from the police headquarters was reportedly in the community to discuss land-related issues when a group of people attacked him. At least 27 persons were rounded up on Tuesday following a formal complaint to the Amasaman Divisional Police Command. But the police say the ringleaders were on the run. Could you then follow and could you Bedu report to the nearest police station in your own interest? And for the people in Asalaja and Amasama areas, the police are poised to work with you to make sure that you go about your duties Anybody who has legally acquired land there should work with the police to make sure that they develop their properties without any let or hindrance. Another team, including the media, were commanded to the area on Thursday, May 9, on a multiple mission to look for suspects who had escaped arrest, retrieve gadgets taken away from the police officer, and to build confidence in the people. The only people on site were women and children. Shops and homes remained locked. While combing the community, we spotted two men who made a U-turn upon seeing the team. This elderly woman broke down wailing over the arrest of her son, whom she described as the breadwinner. The house of the headman of the community, SK Latte, was under lock. He is suspected to have in his possession items taken away from the police sergeant during the assault. Residents, however, pleaded to assist the police locate the suspects. The community will help because the most of the people they have are not the right people. The right people are there. So all the parents are looking forward to get the right people for the police. The police urged the public to assist them locate those involved in the assault to face justice. Just to watch a media life here on TV3. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can join us with the views, comments and suggestions. Or even at all, if you know those responsible for the assault on the police officer, you can do well to share your views and uh, suggestions with us on the story. We're going to go for our MTN video report this afternoon. And our concerned citizen, Precious Demakbo, calls for the renovation of the Nkwanta Municipal Hospital in the OT region. This is in Minnesota. I am currently standing at some of the staff residents. Last year, around February, a storm raised this side of the building down, and it looks like nobody cares about it. The funny thing is that newly posted staff are looking for accommodation in town. I will be excited if a philanthropist can come to the hospital's aid. I am eight year old Shosden Macboyo, citizen journalist reporting from Inquanta Hospital OT region. And your video report via WhatsApp on 055-143-044. That's 055-143-044. We'll take a short break. When we return, we've got the very latest in business news. Welcome to the business news segment here on Midday Live. Now, government intends to come out with a package to promote the local manufacturing industry. A deputy minister of trade and industry, Carlos Kinsley Ahinkra, gave the hints when the Ghana International Trade Commission received petitions from four manufacturing entities. Aluex Limited, Cement Manufacturers Association of Ghana, Steel Manufacturers Association of Ghana, and the Association of Biscuit Manufacturers presented petitions of unfair trade practices. Director, Managing Director of Aluex, Kwesi Oko, said export rebate and dumping are collapsing the industry. After 10 years of being depressed all the time, we are at a stage where we are a leg away from collapsing. The Executive Secretary for Cement Manufacturers and Steel Manufacturers, Reverend Dr. George Dawson Amua, said the cement and steel manufacturing industries continue to suffer from unfair trade practices 
despite their capacity to meet local demand. That we have is adequate in stock capacity to impose cement, unfair trade practice, killing the local scene. Also, let me believe that the Act 926 of the 2016 had the solution. One million metric tons capacity. What is the average demand? It's about 350. The surplus is about 650. Two out of the seven local biscuit manufacturers have collapsed, with five surviving in what the representative of the Biscuit Manufacturers Association, Adel Shami, attributed to unrealistic values of imported biscuits. Low values of imported biscuit uh, to Ghana. We as, as industries, we pay 10% environment tax on all imported wrappers. 10% environment tax. The same biscuit imported. It's using the same wrapper. Everything the same, yet they don't pay anything. Why? We are not saying remove it for us. We are saying impose it equivalent yeah. on. Mm. So that is a win-win for the government. Chair of Ghana International Trade Commission, Nana Dr. Edu Prempe, assured the manufacturers of the commission's support. Local industries are given a fair playing field and are protected from unfair trade practices which may be detrimental to their growth and unfair competition. A deputy minister of trade and industry, Carlos Ahimkura, disclosed that government would announce a support package soon. You can be rest assured that as the vice president has spoken and given some kind of uh, relief to the importing public, so is he preparing himself to come up with something for manufacturers. Now, the Italian oil giant, Eni, has made a significant gas and condensate discovery in the Cape Three Points block for offshore Ghana in the western region. The well drilled on the Akuma exploration prospect proved an estimated volume of between 550 and 650 billion cubic feet of gas and 18 to 20 million barrels of condensate. Discovery has further additional upside for gas and oil that require further drilling to be confirmed. ENI said the Akuma 4 was the first well drilled in CTP Block 4 and represented a discovery of potentially commercial nature due to its proximity to the existing infrastructure. The discovery could be put in production with a subsea tie to the floating production storage and offloading vessel with the aim to extend its production plateau. In a statement, ERI said the exploration well Akuma was located at approximately 50 kilometers off the coast and about 12 kilometers northwest of the Sankofa hub. With the discovery, the country stands the chance of realizing its levels of oil sustainable power generation. The discovery was a historic moment for some Ghanaian crew on board who worked hand in hand with the team leading to the discovery for the country. It is expected that by 2023, Ghana's daily oil production should go beyond 500,000 barrels of oil, which is good news for the country and its claim to remain dominant within the West African subregion. All right, so that's all for the business news segment on Midday Life. Oh, well, that's all for the Midday News here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. I'm black and proud.